a call for unity and action amid a climate emergency and a planetary crisis. You know, this was actually the title of the CBCP Pastoral Statement on Ecology, which I released on January 28, 2022, when I took over as the new president of the CBCP. It is actually an echoing of the earlier statement released by the, my predecessor, Archbishop Romulo Valles, on July 16, 2019. The 2022 statement simply gave a new context to that earlier document, and that context is now the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the intensifying calamities due to the instability of our biosphere and the election of the new leaders in our country in this era of global climate emergency. And so it is important to refer back to the earlier 2019 document before we take a look at the concerns raised in the 20. 22 more recent document. The additional relevance of that 2019 document is that it gives a historical timeline to the development of the CBCP pastoral teachings on ecology through a whole period of 34 years. Within that period of a little less than three and a half decades, the CBCP has already released 10 pastoral statements on ecology with the 2022 document as the 10th. It all began with that very first CBCP pastoral letter on ecology, released in 1988 and entitled, What is Happening to Our Beautiful Land? You know, it was considered a landmark document that preempted Laudato to see by 27 years. And it was in fact quoted by Pope Francis in that famous 2015 encyclical Laudato to see. It was followed 10 years later in 1998 by a second pastoral letter entitled A Statement of Concern on the Mining Act of 1995, which highlighted the ill effects of extractive mining. The bishops were referring back then specifically to a serious environmental disaster caused by the Mark Copper Mining Company in Marinduque, and for which that company had been sued to court. You know, at breakfast this morning, I was happy to note from the Philippine Daily Inquirer headline news that the trial court had finally decided to convict Mark Copper after more than two decades. In the year 2000, a third pastoral letter came out entitled, Water is Life. It called for the protection of our few remaining watersheds and address the issue of water insecurity. Another three years afterwards, in 2003, we issued a fourth pastoral statement entitled Celebrating Creation Day and Creation Time. After another five years, in 2008, we celebrated the 20th anniversary of the landmark 1998 document I mentioned a while ago by releasing the fifth pastoral letter entitled Upholding the Sanctity of Life. And there, basically, we reaffirmed our rejection of irresponsible mining and illegal logging operations, and we included the challenges of global warming and climate change among the new threats to our environment. Now, five years later, in 2013, we came up with a sixth, sixth pastoral letter. It was entitled Pastoral Statement on the Recent Earthquake and Typhoon that Devastated the Central Region of the Philippines. Obviously, its immediate context was the super typhoon Yolanda, one of the most devastating effects of climate change. This 2013 document was again followed two years later by a seventh statement, now entitled Stewards, Not Owners, in 2015, which was the same year that saw the publication of Laudato Si and the visit of Pope Francis to the Philippines, specifically to commiserate with the survivors of Typhoon Yolanda in the Visayas. It was therefore the 2019 document, the eighth pastoral letter entitled 
An urgent call for ecological conversion, hope in the face of climate emergency, that immediately followed four years after Laudato Si, and then two years after that, in August of 2021, we again came up with a ninth pastoral statement, this time entitled, Journeying Together, This Season of Creation 2021, towards renewing the oikos of God. And capping that long string of pastoral statements on ecology, then finally we came up with a 10th document just very recently, January 2022, after our plenary assembly, of course. And we entitled it A Call for Unity and Action, Climate Emergency and Planetary Crisis. Well, like I said, this document keeps referring back to the earlier 2019 document, which is called a testimony of the church's long-standing regard for the care of God's creation, which took its immediate inspiration from the Laudato Si of Pope Francis and his call for a new dialogue about how we are shaping our future. If I may quote from Laudato Si, paragraph 14. So, in all these three major points, or in all the three major points of the 2021 CBCP document on ecology. Number one, the call for ecological conversion. Number two, the National Laudato Si Formation Program. And number three, the call for the advancement of the rights of nature and the defense of life. The basic point of reference was really the 2019 document. It was now made even more relevant by the recent and still ongoing ecological phenomenon of the COVID-19 pandemic which made us even more conscious of our vulnerability as human beings, given the fact that just one viral mutation could cause almost 6 million deaths and could plunge the whole world into a serious economic crisis. In many ways, although we have seven other pastoral letters on ecology that preceded it, the 2019 document was really CBCP's first formal and official attempt at owning Laudato Si and giving it our own local application in the Philippine societal and ecclesial settings. After laying out the historical timeline to illustrate how concern for our environment is an essential dimension of our pastoral ministry, the 2019 statement proceeded to pick out what it considered as key ideas from the Laudato Si that the conference considered most applicable and relevant to the Philippine setting. Let me now sum up to seven points these key elements of Laudato Si as highlighted in the 2019 document. Firstly, that poverty and environmental degradation mutually reinforce each other. That's point number one. It was apparently his recognition of this that had motivated Pope Francis to introduce care for our common home as an eighth work of mercy, both corporal and spiritual. The document highlighted, in particular, the threats to bi biodiversity posed by extractive mining, the growing dependence on fossil fuel energy such as coal, and the consequent escalation of greenhouse gases, what they call GHGs. How these contribute to global warming, which is the root cause of the climate crisis that is radically changing the weather patterns and bringing about tragic devastation in our country and the rest of the world. It also points out that uh, being an archipelago, our country is particularly prone to climate-induced disasters brought about by sea level rise, storm surges, prolonged droughts, and flash floods, among many others. In the more recent past, it notes how the frequency of catastrophic super typhoons like Typhoon Ondoy, Yolanda, Sendong, and Typhoon Pablo have caused irreversible damage to agriculture, marine resources, and the entire bio networks. Now, secondly, the 2019 document echoes the Holy Father's call for 
climate action on behalf of the voiceless people and the planet. It insists on the urgency of climate change, the climate change issue, and that it is clearly related to our Christian responsibility to care for the earth and to care for the poor and vulnerable in our midst. This uh, 2019 document also noted that following the 2015 Paris Agreement to limit the global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius, we have actually only 11 remaining years. Well, if we started counting from this year, it's just 18 years because the 2019 document was already three years ago before reaching the tipping point of global warming that, let me quote, that could lead not only to human suffering, but also the extinction of one million flora and fauna species, unquote. It was the Pope who cried out in 2019 that time is running out, he said. He emphasized the urgency of the issue and the need to, let me quote, take action accordingly in order to avoid perpetrating a brutal act of injustice towards the poor and the future generations, unquote. Now, thirdly, the 2019 document also summed up what it called the theological and moral basis of our response to climate emergency. Following the mind of his predecessor, Pope Benedict XVI, who listed ecological sins among the cardinal sins, Pope Francis referred to our efforts to mitigate global warming as, quote, acts of reparation for our ecological sins, unquote. Fourthly, the document also underscored the key texts in the scriptures that are given in the document as biblical basis for our effort to care for all creation. And uh, these biblical bases are, of course, firstly, the two stories of creation in Genesis 1, uh, 1 to 2, 4a and uh, Genesis 2, 4b up to the very end, the so-called two creation stories. The covenant with Noah in Genesis 19, the Pauline idea of creation groaning to be set free in Romans chapter 8, and of course the Lord's exhortations to simplicity of life as against greed and lifestyle exists in Matthew chapter 6 and Luke chapter 12. Fifth, the document also highlights Laudato Si's call for intergenerational responsibility and solidarity and an integral ecology, quoting from Laudato Si, paragraph 13. Pope Francis calls this a basic issue of justice on account of the fact that, and let me quote him, the world we have received also belongs to those who will follow us, meaning the next generation, unquote. And so this 2019 document of the CBCP reminds the present generation that we owe it to the next generation of Filipinos to ensure ecological integrity and biodiversity cons conservation for their own benefit in their own time. I'm talking, of course, about the future generation. Sixth, the 2019 document of the CBCP also emphasized that at the very core of ecological conversion is a recognition of the right of nature and integral ecology. This, it says, requires of us a kind of paradigm shift from our prevalently, and let me quote it directly, anthropocentric and utilitarian perspectives to a re-establishment of our sacred relationship with nature, being ourselves part of nature. This paradigm shift should be able to make us more aware that the cry of Mother Earth is as equally urgent as the cry of the poor for social justice. And now lastly, the seventh. The 2019 document winds up by reiterating the late St. Pope John Paul II's 
call to action and ecological conversion and highlighting it as an urgent issue in the church and an integral aspect of our responsibility as Christians. Then it refers back to Laudato Si, where Pope Francis reminds the church never to separate care for the earth from care for the poor. In short, integral ecology is inseparable from an integral society. The document also recalls again the first pastoral letter in 1988 that drew from the Christological hymns in Ephesians 1 verses 9 to 10 and Colossians 1 verses 16 to 17, where St. Paul situated Christ right at the very center point of human history and creation, with the implication that the destruction of any part of creation inevitably causes a defacing of the image of Christ which is etched in creation itself. The text concludes by articulating four ecological convictions that the church must abide by. One, that we are to protect all life forms on earth if we truly care for it as our common home. Two, that we are duty bound to act and resist all forms of destruction damaging our people and our planet. Three, that we are not only connected to the earth, but also interconnected with every fellow creature. And fourth, that we hear both the cry of the poor and the cry of the earth. Well, this CBCP 2019 document also reiterated the call on all metropolitan provinces, dioceses, parishes, and basic ecclesial communities to make ecology their special concern and to pursue the decree of the Second Plenary Council of the Philippines calling for the setting up of an ecological desk in every social action center, in every parish, in every diocese. Their task is basically to spearhead our revitalized ecology programs and lead the faithful in committing to live the spirit and the principles of Laudato Si through the following 13 ecological concerns. And so the 2019 document ends with these very important 13 concrete ecological actions. 13. Number one, to integrate the care of creation in our teaching and practice of discipleship. Number two, to live simply. Number three, to prevent and reduce biodiversity loss before it's too late. Four, to promote diversified and sustained agriculture. Five, to protect and preserve our seas, oceans, and fishery resources. Six, to protect our watersheds. Seven, to transition into safe, clean, and affordable energy. Eight, to get our Catholic institutions to divest from investment portfolios involving destructive extractive projects, those especially coal mining, of course. Ninth, to integrate Laudato Si in the curriculum and strategic plans of all our schools, all our seminaries, and all our formation houses. Tenth, to aim for a well-informed and empowered citizenry. Eleven, to network with international bodies. Twelve, to respect, recognize, and support the rights of indigenous peoples. And finally, thirteenth, strengthen adaptation measures and disaster risk management and reduction. That was the basic content 
of the 2019 document that was basically echoed or referred back by our 2022 January pastoral statement on ecology. This is Bishop Pablo Virgilio David, Bishop of Caloocan, and the President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines.